Our guests today are Drs. Irina and Michael Comboy of the Department of Bioengineering at the University of California, Berkeley. Their discovery of the rejuvenation effects of parabiosis in a seminal paper published in Nature 2005 paved the way for a thriving field of rejuvenation biology. The Comboy lab currently focuses on broad rejuvenation of tissue maintenance and repair, stem cell niche engineering, elucidating the mechanisms underlying muscle stem cell aging, directed organogenesis, and making CRISPR a therapeutic reality. And with that, let me start the interview. So, Irina and Mike, uh, welcome to Modern Health Man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us, Thank yeah. You. Uh, you're very welcome. So, can I start off by asking, what is your theory of aging? Why do you think we age? And particularly the experiments you've done, how has that kind of informed your thinking about how, why we age? Um, um, and we had laboratory that we pretty much run together since 2005 at UC Berkeley. Mm. Um, and you're right. Uh, one of our main focus is on engineering longevity. Can we remain mm. healthy for many more decades than currently? Right? Mm. And so there are many, many theories about aging, but really there are all theories. Nothing has been really proven to explain why do we grow old and mm. become progressively less healthy. Not all the time. So we have this nice sweet spot of many years when we are productive, we have good quality of life, and then things start falling apart. Mm. So, um, so there are some people who believe that it's all pre-programmed. We are programmed to go old and die. But in my opinion, the predominance of scientific evidence kind of argues against it. And simply mm -hmm. that um, we have very limited ability to repair our bodies. We have abilities to repair. Mm -hmm. Cells can repair things inside the cells. We can have new cells that replace old cells, but this ability is limited. And so it is simply that entropy takes, takes over, that we live in an entropic world and entropy takes over and we will stand the entropy for some time, but then not perfectly. And so that's kind of my opinion, why we grow. Mike might have some additional things to say over. Yeah, something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it more in bits and pieces, I guess. So, so yeah. do you see the major difference between as we age, is that our, we get more damage or our repair capability goes down? We definitely don't get more damage. Right. In fact, older people seem to take better care of themselves and try to prevent damage, right? So right. there aren't these blueberries and sunscreen and young people don't care, but mm -hmm. Even though the damage might be more for young people, the repair is just so much better, like three to five times better in our experiments. So that they repair all of the damage, and they don't notice it. And so our laboratory then has this paradigm, scientific paradigm, what if we improve repair in older people? Can we gradually rejuvenate them? Stop from aging, and in fact, gradually they become younger, since they're replacing broken parts of their bodies with brand new ones. Right, just turning the repair mechanism back on, really. Yes, yes. exactly. Moving it, making it more, um, more efficient. Okay, so what I'd like to turn to is your, the, the blood exchange experiments that you've been doing, which are, I think, really fascinating, really interesting. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the most recent one was, uh, there's two papers and they have, they have to do with what we, what we termed as neutral blood exchange, but mm. is, is basically a, uh, I don't know, like a, like a, 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 a plasma change, right? mm. throw away the plasma, keep the red blood cells, keep the white blood cells, um, and re replace the plasma with purified albumin in saline, kind of like a, kind of like an oil change for your car or, you know, we, we have aquariums and fish tanks. So it's like changing the water in your fish tank. Right. Right. Okay. So let's well, let's talk about the uh, the one that you did on the the cognition because I, I I saw that one, but I would actually like to talk about the kind of the three germ layer one as well. But so out of macro, 
okay, so can you tell us what you saw in that paper? What was kind of the outcome? Yeah, so, um, so you know, long time ago in 2005, we published paper on hydrochronic parabiosis. Mm -hmm. So we thought of suturing young and old mice together very you know, gently, they don't experience pain and suffering, but they wake up kind of like um, conjoined twins, mm. which is possible to do in mice because they are genetically identical. Mm. And so um, and so then the question was, if you do that, can we reverse aging? Yeah. Right? And the answer was yes. But many people believe that it is because of the secret sauce in young blood, and young blood could be a medicine, and so there was major direction mm. into young blood. But from the work that we did and experiments and like what we knew, we questioned. In fact, to us, it seemed that it is not young blood at all. So then to clearly show that it is not young blood, we then replaced old blood with 50% with 50 of saline, salty water. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, blood abundant protein albumin without which animal would be sick. So there was no young blood, it's just dilution of old plasma. Mm -hmm. And what we saw is that every single thing that was rejuvenated when young mice and old mice shared the, their blood system was also rejuvenated in, in that approach. So every single thing that we tested. Mm. So muscle repair became better. There was less fibrosis in muscle. Liver, adiposity declined and less fibrosis in liver. And, um, and then for the brain, we look at formation of no, new neurons mm -hmm. and those also improved. So every single thing that people postulated was due to young blood happened without young blood. And, and some, some behavioral or, or cog cognitive improvements. So yes. The, the mice could discriminate objects better, right? So they, they learn mm -hmm. familiar objects and then you give them, you challenge them with a new object and then do they, do they spend more time investigating the new object, right? Yeah. And, and, and old mice don't do that so much. They're- Yeah, they're like kind of old they don't, people. They don't know right? the difference, right? So, yeah. Um, but the rejuvenated old mice, they seem to spend more time. Studying, what is this new thing? <laughs> right. It was different thing, now it's new thing. Our texture was different texture and now it's new texture. So, um, so, and a lot of studies were done on cognition and young blood. So it was important for us to then extend our discovery that it is not young blood, that the mechanism is opposite to cognition. And so we did it and what happened is that Typically, old people or old animals are not very curious or mm -hmm. inquisitive about their environment. But young people and animals are, right? And so after this procedure of neutral blood exchange, which does not require young partner or blood body, how it was put in the economist. Uh, and it, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it is simple dilution of age elevated systemic proteins. So after that procedure, um, old mice became very quickly after one single procedure, really statistically similar to young mice in their cognitive capacity, at least in this one set of tests, which there's short memory and curiosity. Right, so I was gonna ask about that. So you, you did this uh, one time and then measured, so how long did you continue to measure the mice? Did it kind of, reset them to an earlier age and then they just aged as normal or yeah we don't know so we are fundraising to do this and not in uh, mice but in people uh because you maybe remember that in the papers that we published in may last year we published pilot clinical studies and the uh the studies continue with our clinical collaborator dr dobry kiprov mm -hmm. might might tell you more about the studies but one of the point is to extend the pilot studies, which turn out to be very promising, into a phase three clinical trial where one of the endpoints or the one of the things we are going to study is how long do the effect last? So far, it seems that there are many effects, very important effects that influence cognition that last at least one month. In humans or mice? 
the, the mice the mice work is is ongoing too. I mean, we're not going to abandon the mouse studies to have some million dollar. Uh, no, like tens of millions. Tens of millions right. of dollars, you know, double blind human human trial. <laughs> that will take a long time to get up and running, much less complete. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cheaper and quicker to work with mice. That's why mm -hmm. we work with mice. Right. So um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're, we're, we'll try to figure out how how long. What's what's the decay curve of the mm -hmm. um, after one of these exchange events? Um, how many like how many yeah. hallmarks of aging can be? Is, is there is there a minimum you know volume or something that needs to have to be exchanged mm -hmm. in order to get the effect? Um, and then, of course, uh, to move as, as quickly as what, what types of changes um, are, are persistent, you know, and associated with, with the rejuvenation, right? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Uh, cell signaling changes, yeah. stem cell state changes, things like that. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there is no medicine, there are very few medicine that examples of medicine, very few examples mm. of medicine where you take one pill and you are then good to go forever. Mm. Particularly age for age-related diseases, right? It is mm. something that people are taking all the time. For example, to combat arthritis or high blood pressure. Um, and it would be, I think, more reasonable to assume that with the plasmapheresis rejuvenative approach to plasmapheresis will be somewhat similar. That it will be a repetitive treatment. But it is important to figure out the intervals mm -hmm. between the treatment. And that might be also very likely, in fact, not just might be, but very likely to be different for individuals. Somebody might be healthier than somebody else, slightly younger, and somebody mm -hmm. else might be on the brink of developing Alzheimer's disease. And so the intervals of treatments is individualized mm -hmm. precision medicine. Right. Okay, and I, I would like to kind of come back to the, the, the human the, the human trials uh, later, but so what, can, can you tell me, what do you think is the mechanism that's working? Um, so you're removing some elements from the blood stream. Uh, which element you're removing and why does this have this impact? So Mike gives his very good analogy with oil change and fish tank water change. And uh, <laughs> do you want to? So, I, I already said it, go ahead. You said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so basically what happens is that um, as tissues and cells become to go out of work, so to speak, so they don't work very well, they start over producing particular proteins. Mm -hmm. And the proteins that they overproduce actually are important for them. They will mm -hmm. produce them because they are in a stressed up situation, they are stressed cells. Mm -hmm. But once that happens, the same proteins then inhibit our ability to repair ourselves and regenerate and cause fibrosis and inflammation. So this adaptive response to stress is the double-edged sword, which then mm -hmm. causes accumulation of molecules in our blood that are counterproductive. It's the best way to put it. They're productive for for maturation and and, uh, and differentiation and like you know for the for the the um, the, the 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 well developed tissue, but they're not they're not the the types of things that the stem cells and the progenitor cells cue off of to replace and repair tissue. Yes. Um, so one of the one of the common things that people have found in in, in multiple tissues is that with age. The signals to the stem and progenitor cells to, you know, to to divide and and contribute to to new new tissue uh, replacement, new tissue growth, that drops with age, and then the increase there's a corresponding increase with signals that, in general, tend to be um, pro differentiative, um, and they also will double duty in the in the in the immune system as being pro-inflammatory, which, which for the immune system is it's it's, it's differentiation, it's terminal differentiation state. So, yeah. so we kind of look at, and, at yeah. aging and, and you know, yeah. some early work that, that Irina did and, and uh, we, we, we did demonstrate that in muscle and then it's been confirmed, it's been in other tissues too and other people have studied this. So we tend to see the, the changes with, the, with blood and then with the, the 
dilution of the of stuff in the old blood is is potentially resetting that. Right. So then, so then what happens if you now drop their levels by 50 to 70%, which is what plasma paresis does, right? It is kind of bleeding out and you would die from it, but it is done as the FDA approved procedure where you are not bleeding out. When your blood goes through the machine and the cells are returned to you and plasma is replaced with physiological fluid. So you're mm. pretty much throwing out huge amounts of this overproduced proteins in your bloodstream. And so the first positive effect comes from simply having less of them. So that is the very first wave of rejuvenation where now you don't have that much inflammation. But then what we discovered also in the paper that was published in May, they inhibit all of these so-called youthful factors. The factors that people try to find in young blood did not disappear from your genome. You still have that encoded in your cells, right? Mm -hmm. But their production is suppressed by those age elevated proteins. So once those age elevated proteins go down, all of the youthful factors that then promote tissue repair and intracellular repairs go up as a second mm -hmm. wave of rejuvenation. And so then you become somewhat younger we don't know if it's by iota or how much younger, but really, you know, physically younger after that procedure. So you removed inhibitors and you reactivated the positive things which were not produced in your body. So that's the interesting mechanism that we postulate in our paper and have some evidence. Right. So that. So one question I had about that. So the uh, blood, is the blood the main kind of reservoir for these proteins? Because, I mean, if we take senescent cells, right? Senescent cells are producing SASP, which, they're, which gets into the blood. And so we mm -hmm. take the blood out, we clean it, we get rid of the SASP, but the senescent cells are still there. So they're- Not, not really, um, but it's an important point. So, um, so senescent cells are still a very fluid concept. Mm. We don't know what those cells are and whether they are permanently senescent. There is some recent observation saying that, no, they can become less senescent. And instead of senolytic approach, there is senamorphic, which will make senescent cell less senescent and produce less yeah. cells. And so in, in the paper, some of the papers that we published in 2019, we show that our approaches to rejuvenation actually make senescent cells less senescent. Mm -hmm. There are either less of them or they are not senescent anymore. So, um, so to think that something changes irreversibly was a concept before we started the hydrochronic parabiosis experiments. It was thought that, you know, you lose telomeres, DNA is damaged, reactive oxygen species increased and you have perturbed proteins. Mm. And because of that, we did the parabiosis experiment. That, that makes a permanent Yes. A permanent shift in some cells to the senescent so locks them into senescence. It locks them into senescence. Yeah. But what we showed in numerous studies, and not just us, but our colleagues all over the world and in the US, is that you can rapidly rejuvenate the entire old animal that is analogous to 80 year old person in every single organ and tissue where we looked. So that kind of questions the single truck train of aging and says that aging could be reversed. And then when we look at specific subsets of cells, there are some reports and scientific meetings this, that the same thing happens, that cells which were considered to be completely permanently senescent and expressing SA beta gal, which is the marker of senescent, could be reversed into completely non-senescent dividing cells that do not express beta gal. They get, they get cured of their senescence. Yes. So, so, um, so yes, so that is kind of another perhaps way to think about it is that we are still challenging the concept or paradigm of irreversibility of aging and senescence. Right. And so this would also apply to the other, because I, I believe SASP is not the only kind of bad or aging protein that you want to remove from the plasma, that there are other proteins. And so that would apply to these as well. I mean, the liver or a probe, it's kind of a probe differentiation protein profile. It's, it's the mm -hmm. protein that cells will make when they're 
when they're not growing anymore, when they're you know, maturing into whatever tissue um, in the immune system, that they'd, they'd be inflammatory cytokines and then local cells. There's some signals that they produce that 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 are help them in trouble. Come, you know, maybe come you have the immune system come and eat me. And I'm sure like the cells that are really, you know, really have DNA damage and are really sick and, and mm -hmm. they, I don't know. I, I, we don't know what happens to them when we don't know what rejuvenation happens. treatment, yeah. but there's not many of them. There's, there's, yeah. there's not that many cells and, they, and they, right. they, they have their SAS, but they produce that kind of locally. I'm not so sure if what we see in the blood is if you could attribute that to the, the, the sum of all the SAS of, of the cells in your body that are, that were, senescent or at least that senescent as opposed to just stuff that cells produce in your body when there there's a lot of mature cells around uh -huh. right mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. we okay. still have the big challenge of identifying senescent cells and mapping them in vivo in people mm -hmm. tissues that is the big mm -hmm. frontier so once that frontier is accomplished then we will know more but SASP is a gamish of many things. It is pretty much pro-inflammatory cytokines and proteins. It's not just one protein. And, um, and like Mike said, it's probably not the main contributor to age imposed changes in your blood protein. It's not right. the main contributor from that. Right, so we have all these mature cells um, who are producing the proteins that mature cells produce, right? And we, we clean them out. Uh, would they not continue to produce these same proteins? Um, and so they will, but not as much because as each much. of these um, elevated protein is also feeding to itself to make more of itself. So right. once you break this positive feedback, now for some time you will not produce as much as before, and that some time will also promote expression and production of young, so-called young factors that diminish with age. And again, the, um, the key for us is to, to define what is that some time? How long does it last? How can we prolong it? How can we make the effect stronger? But every time when it happens, the person or a mouse, an animal, mammal, becomes slightly younger. They right. have all of these mechanisms to become slightly younger. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.